Before moving to Minneapolis for a job opportunity through a Christian work program, the 46-year-old spent almost his entire life in a starkly black third world when he was called Big Floyd and regarded as an OG, a de facto community leader and elder statesman, his ministry partners say. He spoke of breaking the cycle of violence he found among young people and use of influence to bring outside ministries to the area to do discipleship and outreach, particularly in the Cooney Clemens Housing Project, locally known as the Bricks. George Floyd was a person of peace sent from the Lord that helped the gospel go forward in a place that I never lived in, says the, the pastor. The platform for each of us to reach that community neighborhood and the hundreds of people we reached through that time and up till now was built on the backs of people like Floyd. So, so, so uh, Professor, like, I guess this is the issue, right? I mean, the stereotypes matter because when a person shows up, and they're passing might be a fake twenty dollar bill. It's completely disproportionate to send four police officers and pin them down with the neck with the with the with the, with the their uh, their knee on the back of their neck for ten minutes. Like I guess that's what we're trying to talk about is what is behind the disproportionate reaction. And it, 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 it continues. No, no. I mean, I think it's just this uh, disregard for Africans and a, a disregard for Africa and a lack of knowledge about Africa and Africa's history. If you look at, uh, if you go to Europe, you, go, you take trips to Europe all the time with uh, tour trips, and you go around the museums there, um, you see uh, lots and lots of pictures from the late Middle Ages and early modern period where you've got nativity scenes and scenes of the crucifixion and things like that, and there are always Africans in those pictures, black Africans who are well dressed, who are obviously leaders in the community, they're important people, and you have this heritage in Europe right up to the time of the Enlightenment of Africa being looked upon very respectfully, but Africans were just like the Chinese, you've got pictures of Chinese in museums too, and you know, they're always treated well. And, that's that's what really have, and, and I, I want to talk a little bit more regarding Hexham about some of the stereotypes and so preconceptions that I think we continue to see played out in the U.S., which is, I don't know, like it's, it's frustrating that they, they cannot seem to 
uh, move on together from the collective history, and we've been going through a little bit of that. So what is the solution? Uh, Erwin Hexen is professor in the Department of Classics and Religion at the University of Calgary. So, Professor, let me just put this to you, because every year we have uh, Black History Month, and I, I'm, I'm always sort of unsure of the kind of history that's important to bring forward, because if you're trying to bring understanding between different racial communities, it seems to me that there's got to be some, some stories that can help do that. You've been talking about celebrating the great civilizations and cultures from sort of the, 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 the pre-slavery um, days. Is, is that going to be part and parcel of it, is to, is to, is to bring forward those positive stories that, have, that, that every other civilization seems to manage to have brought forward? Yes, I think that's a very big part of it, but I think also one's got to think about this thing about one's got to recognize there are two major slavery movements. There's a North Atlantic slavery movement and there's the internal African. And the internal African one is what left Africa and the African kingdom, in fact the kingdom of the Congo, which was destroyed in about the end of the 4th, 14th century. You have these kingdoms that were very close to European kingdoms at the time. They were destroyed by slavers. So one's got to look at that very carefully, and unfortunately a lot of black history overlooks that. I mean, I don't know whether they're even aware of some of the earlier history of Africa. Uh, we were fortunate at the USC because we, Peter Shinney, who did a lot of, uh, he was an archaeologist, he did a lot of work on uh, Africa and sort of pre-modern Africa, pre-15th uh, century Africa. He looked at the Sudan, he looked at uh, Ghana and other places, their early history, when there was a good civilization developing that eventually got destroyed. And this is the issue, that Africa was a catastrophe. But that doesn't mean that people are stupid, but when people look at Africa, they think, oh, there's no civilization there at all, they've never had a civilization, they've always lived in huts. And that's the image. And because of that, they're seen as being you know, more violent than other people, which says that Africans are remarkably calm people and very nice people. And yet, you know, there's this image of the tough African, about that they're just thugs and they're robbers and they can't work, and they can do those things, but the history of Africa is a major tragedy and we need to teach it, I think, very clearly, and look at what happened, what went wrong, and not simply blame colonialism. Colonialism did a lot of bad things, but colonialism also ended the internal African slave trade, which wasn't ended until late in the 19th century. I mean, this is the thing we deal with. So I've got the way saying, look, history sucks. <laughs> there's all kinds of atrocities yeah. that happen in history. What if we look at it the other way? Like, there's some wonderful success stories in Africa that are emerging in Kenya, in Ghana, and is, is, is maybe um, profiling some of the, the great successes that we're now seeing in Africa. Does that, does that have an impact oh, on, 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 on public attitudes? Of course, uh, of course it does, and I think that's got to be profiled, and it, Africa's coming into its own. But on the other hand, I think the history needs to be there too, because without the history, you wonder, well, what's this gap? They've got all these things from Europe, you can easily say that. Which isn't true. There, there were African civilizations. The Africans are like everyone else. They're, they, you can't have this racial division. And we, what we see uh, in lots of our subconscious thinking, or at least in our textbooks and things, is a subconscious racism that Asia's great, Africa, well, you know, they're okay, they're, they're humans like us and they can do well, but really they've got everything from us in the first place, and that's not true. We've got a lot from Africa. How big is the racism problem in, in Canada, do you think? I think there's an underlying racism, definitely. Um, I don't think it's quite as bad as Mr. Trudeau may try to make out. And, uh, I think it can be overcome. Um, I don't think you see it very much in the universities uh, with students, and that's an interesting place, but um, there is an underlying racism. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with us. I appreciate your time today. Well, thank you for having me. You've got it. That's Irving Hexham, professor in the Toronto Classics and Religion at the University of Calgary. We're talking about uh, this profile that's been done on George Floyd, about the uh, involvement he had in this Christian community and the great work that he was doing to uh, to try to, to help the kids and young people and young men be a role model to the kingdom for 3,000 years. And all of this has been wiped out. And so Africans are seen as these 
backward people. And then the other thing that goes on that has made it worse is the embrace of um, social evolution. I'm, I'm not talking about evolution as a theory, a scientific theory, but I'm thinking of it in terms of looking at the way human societies have developed. And I remember going to, into a museum in South Africa, in Peter Maritzburg, and on uh, the wall there was a sort of one of these diagrams of evolution, and it had all, all the tree branches coming off, and at the very top you'd got the Europeans, and then at the very bottom, just above the apes, you'd got Africans. Now, I'm not joking when I say just above the apes. That's where they had Africans. They were at the bottom of the evolutionary tree. And uh, this gives this people this impression that Africans are stupid, they're bad, they're violent, and I think this is what we've got to change. So when they talk about systemic racism, it's, it's those stereotypes that continue to be perpetuated that, that creates this division in the United States. Is that, is that one of the things that you're observing? I think that's one of the things that lies behind them. I mean, obviously there are immediate causes and there's a, a local history of people interacting with blacks and things like this. But if you look at um, our own history in Canada in particular, uh, if you look at things like the eugenics movement in the 19, well, from 1885 to 1945, um, Canada was very keen on eugenics, and eugenics is based upon ultimately racial discrimination. And it depends who taught and they're bred into people. And uh, we, we're living with this heritage. Alberta, I see, um, at the Baston University has just brought out a new book, Psychiatry and the Legacies of Eugenics. And these things have to be taken seriously and people have got to realize that Africa, like other parts of the world, had a great history. The civilization of Ethiopia in the 14th century was roughly equivalent to the civilization of Europe. And nobody knows that. And so everybody thinks that you've got these Africans and they're running around wild and then you see pictures of Africans, you see mud huts. If you see pictures of Chinese, you see um, very elaborate buildings and art, see pictures of India, you see the temples and they're elaborate and they're beautiful, and then you see pictures of Africa and you've got a mud hut. And I think this is stuck in people's thinking about Africans. So when they see a black man, they see somebody who's a bit different from other humans because, uh, you know, these are people who never escaped from the Stone Age. Now, there's a reason for this. And uh, that's a, a long story in itself, but essentially, the African civilizations were destroyed by slave traders. And it's the role of slavery in Africa that we've got to look at. And it's not, I'm not talking here about the North Atlantic slave trade, which everyone knows about. Um, according to the UN a few years ago, um, between 5 and 10 million Africans were taken in slavery and brought to North America, or to the Americas. Uh, on the other hand, the African slave trade, which started in the 7th century, uh, took over 200 million Africans into slavery. And many of them died, many of them were castrated, well the slaves were automatically castrated, the males, as they were taken to uh, places like the Sudan where they were then uh, worked in mines. Um, the Sudan um, was, as I said, originally an African kingdom, and then it was overrun. And it went into decline, but it also provided a source for minerals for other places, and slaves were used there right down to the end of the 19th century on a large scale, and these were African slaves, black Africans. This, um, like, this is one of the real challenges, right, is that I, in some ways I think in Canada, we think, well, the slave trade ended prior to Canada becoming a nation, so that's really more of an English heritage. Or you look at America and say, well, they're, they're separate from us, it's a, it's a different heritage. But what I'm hearing from you is that be, because there hasn't been almost like a rediscovery of the pre-slavery history, it sort of set people's attitudes in ab about what Africa has always been, which, is, which are just not accurate. And it's leading to stereotypes and it's leading to discrimination. Am I following it correctly? Yes, you're following me correctly. I think uh, this plays a big role in how, we pe how people see Africa. I mean, people don't see Ch Chinese in a similar way 
and the Chinese had slavery and there were Chinese slaves and things, but the Chinese are always seen as very intelligent people with this great culture. And you think of India, well, very intelligent people with a great culture. Think of Africa, well, they may be nice people, but, uh, you know, there's no historical heritage. There is a historical heritage. The heritage of um, the Ethiopian uh, Nubian heritage. Nubia was the kingdom that was has today become the Sudan. Um, that goes back to 3000 BC, and it was a high civilization, but it was destroyed. And it was destroyed finally in around the 14th century AD. So it's not very long ago. It was destroyed by um, slavers. Let's pause for a minute because the implications of what you're saying are, are complicated. Because how do you then, we, we just finished Black History Month before the COVID crisis hit. Are we even focusing on the right things to try to bring this level of understanding and to, to try to overcome some of the historical biases? What are the things that we should be learning that we're not learning? I'm gonna important to some people please listen if you're not here to listen don't be here okay, Tash. like the fuck are you fucking doing
Evidence, they have their own cameras. That camera is better than mine, that's for sure. Looks like you can zoom in and for like a hundred miles. Oh, the video camera, that one. Thank you. 
L'expérience des personnes noires est réelle et doit être partagée. Black Lives Matter. Je tiens à... taken care of, that the people who need to help them can hear. <laughs> All right, um, I feel like they are being attended to, so thank you for caring about this person. Look at how we did that. Did you do that? you see a black person. I, I want to um, end on this. <laughs> Love the messy black people. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Love the messy black people. <laughs> or are mean, or are loud, or are sex workers, or you feel like they're messy, or, or like they don't have a job, or whatever. with all the people who donated water and sanitizer and masks and their time. Security team, thank you. Um, our ASL people, our support people, our speakers. Rifles and flak jackets, mama was suicidal, papa had bad habits, product of true survival, rockin' like Black Sabbath, hoppin' about the Chevy, Pac Biggie Machiavelli, OG like Nasa Reggie, culture like Oxenbelly, Vogel like Akinelli, focus like Dr. Sebi, we did it your way but now the
the culture is bopping to our Sinatra medley I'm limitless energy, they gimmicks and imagery Kendrick Cole and the Kennedys, lyrical holy trinity General of the city, they in the promoting silly beef Keeping it willy deep, wheezy only a milli beat Dream chasing, facing the enemy like my nigga Meek Tyler Perry writing my winning speech like it's Emmy week Heart of gold, never sold my soul, Glock weighs a ton Hove telling Lori Harvey no with Rock Nation brunch One life to live, just don't say one life, I'ma live forever Stand for something, fall for nothing, no Rest in peace, the dead, that's all my soul You only die once and then you go Who thought we'd be fighting all along? Who don't know the rights from the wrong? Truth is to the light behind you How much more do you want? You wanna send us back to where we came from? Cause we just savages well, here's my ass to kiss, yeah, yeah I made a gold my nigga I go back home, I'm a gold my nigga We taking all the land back, they stole my nigga Cause what you reap now is what you sow, my nigga Where your soul, my nigga, goddamn One life to live, just don't say One life, I'ma live forever Stand for something, fall for nothing, no Rest in peace, the dead, that's all my soul You only die once and then you go Who thought we'd be fighting all alone? Who don't know the rights from the wrong? Truth comes to the light behind it all If I rule the world I would go return all of the gold that was stole Reupholster the nose on the sphinx, it's a world war huh? They tryna take the soul out of soul Niggas say I sold out, I never sold out a show Even though people drove out in droves Plus a whole lot of hoes, I suppose On the road to success, you gotta pay the toll I was told I don't hang with pawns, I'm gang is cons Slang with a gang of cons that came with guns Who speak the language from the ancient ones Dangerous, huh? We shine a nigga, shame the sun Do I move D or Stay a Saint Laurent Cause y'all fashion week in the Saint Milan Calusa to your one pawns day New York Make sure it's peppercorn sauce on my filet me on my nigga One life to live just don't say One life I'ma live forever Stand for something fall for nothing no Rest in peace the dead that's on my soul You only die once and then you go Who thought we be fighting all alone Who don't know the rights from the wrong Truth is to the light behind it all. I feel the action, my hands up alone, my antenna. Seneca, we born sinner. Kill it, cause we born dinner. Try to warn, nigga. But it keep on going, try to stay away from foreign, nigga. Better recognize when the devil show his horns. He enjoying his horns like Donald Gorns. It's the difference between yours.